Hi everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to talk about a relatively common finding which is, left bundle branch block. As we know, QRS widening is common, and have several differential diagnoses. On the other hand, broad QRS complexes, often cause secondary STT changes, that may be mistaken for life-threatening conditions, including acute myocardial ischemia. Therefore, every healthcare provider must know bundle branch block very well. Let's start with wide QRS complexes. As you might know, broad complexes have various causes. 1. Bundle branch blocks. 2. WPW syndrome. 3. Ventricular rhythms. 4. Pacemaker rhythm. 5. Electrolyte disturbances especially hypercalemia. 7. Hypothermia. 8. Poisoning with sodium channel blocking agents like DC toxicity. In this video, we will explain left bundle branch block in details. Every heart has electrical system that contains, SA node, internodal fibers, AV node, bundle of his, right and left bundle branches, and finally Purkinje system. Recall that, normal activation of ventricles, depends on the proper function of bundle branches, and occurs when, electrical impulses reach both right and left ventricle via bundle branches. In conclusion, an intraventricular conduction delay or IVCD, is either a complete, or partial interruption of the electrical pathways, inside the wall of the heart between two ventricles. IVCD classifies into three main categories. 1. Left bundle branch block or LBBB. 2. Right bundle branch block or RBBB. 3. Non-specific intraventricular conduction delay or non-specific IVCD. The hallmark of all three categories, is wide QRS complexes, which is more than 2.5 small boxes in duration. First, let's go through the electrocardiographic criteria of LBBB. Remember that, there are five cardinal signs in LBBB. 1. Wide QRS complexes. 2. Dominant S wave in V1. 3. Broad, notched or slurred R wave in leads D1, AVL, V5, and V6, or an occasional RS pattern in V5 and V6. 4. Absent Q waves in D1, V5, and V6, but in the lead AVL, a narrow Q wave may be present. 5. R peak time greater than 60 milliseconds in lateral leads, but normal in V1. V2 and V3. Remember that, in addition to cardinal findings, secondary SDT wave changes, is frequently observed in LBBB. Let's see what secondary SDT wave changes are. Secondary SDT wave changes, is an umbrella term, that is referred to any abnormal SDT wave changes, owing to QRS complex widening. It is associated with, bundle branch block, WPW syndrome, ventricular hypertrophy pacemaker rhythms and so on. In general, secondary STT changes are disconcordant. Disconcordance means, ST segment and T wave changes are in opposite direction to QRS complex polarity. Therefore, when deep S wave is present, ST elevation with upright D wave is recorded. Conversely, when prominent R wave is present, ST depression with inverted D wave is seen. Note that. Disconcordant STT changes are not included as criteria and diagnosis of bundle branch blocks. So, they can be present or absent in LBBB as well. Other associated features in LBBB are right, left or even extreme axis deviation, poor R wave progression, and tall T waves. Let's go through several examples. Our first EKG belongs to an 80-year-old male, known case of hypertension, presented with atypical chest discomfort and weakness. In physical examination he is tachycardia. As you see, the QRS complexes are broad, with deep S wave and V1, and tall slurred R wave laterally. No septal Q wave is observed in lateral leads. R peak time in lateral leads, is obviously prolonged in about 120 milliseconds. Therefore, this is a typical LBBB. Other associated findings in this strip are, left axis deviation, poor R wave progression, and occasional secondary SDT wave changes. As you see, there are SD elevations with upright D waves, secondary to deep S waves in V1 to V4, D3 and AVF. 
while there are ST depressions, secondary to slurred R wave and D1 and AVL. Therefore, the STT changes in this tracing are disconcordant, and considered as normal. Recall that, secondary STT wave changes in bundle branch blocks, is not an obligation. They can be present in some, or all leads, or may be absent. As you see, here, in spite of tall and slurred R in V5 and V6, no significant ST depression or D wave inversion is present. In summary, this is a typical LBBB, with secondary STT wave changes. Next TKG, is obtained from a 49-year-old female, with ongoing dizziness and vomiting. An EKG is taken. Again, the QRS complexes are broad, with deep S wave and V1, and notched R wave laterally. No septal Q wave is observed in lateral leads. R peak time in lateral leads, is obviously prolonged, about 80 milliseconds. Therefore, this is a typical LBBB as well. Other associated findings are, delayed R wave progression, and occasional disconcord and SDT wave changes. There are SD elevations with upright D waves, when deep S wave is present. On the other hand, SD depression or inverted D wave, is recorded where slurred R wave is recorded. Our third strip, is from a 55 year old female, known case of diabetes, presented with weakness, vomiting and diaphoresis. Again, the QRS complexes are broad, with deep S wave and V1, and notched R wave laterally. No septal Q wave is observed in lateral leads. R peak time in V6, D1, and AVL is obviously prolonged, and about 100 milliseconds. Therefore, this is a typical LBBB. Other associated findings are, delayed R wave progression, tall T waves, and secondary SDT wave changes. Recall that, tall T wave is a normal finding in LBBB. The last example, is a middle-aged man, known case of ischemic heart disease, presented with dyspnea at rest. As you see, the QRS complexes are clearly broad, with deep S wave and V1 and RS pattern in V5 and V6. Recall that, RS pattern in V5 and V6, is a normal finding in LBBB. No septal Q wave is observed in lateral leads. R peak time in lateral leads, is obviously prolonged, about 80 milliseconds. Therefore, this is a typical LBBB. Other associated findings are, poor R wave progression, and secondary SDT wave changes. Note that, SD elevations with upright D waves, in V1 to V4 and AVR, are due to, deep and broad S waves, while ST depressions and D wave inversions in D1 and AVL, are thanks to dominant slurred R wave. Before going through the next part, if you liked this video till now, please subscribe me and ring the bell for further videos. Let's go through several important tips. LBBB can be complete or incomplete. The only difference between incomplete and complete LBBB, is QRS duration. Duration greater than 3 small squares, is considered as complete LBBB, while QRS complexes, between 2.5 to 3 small boxes, is considered as incomplete LBBB. Unlike RBBB, LBBB is usually a marker of organic heart disease. Therefore, LBBB may be the first clue, to 4 undiagnosed but extremely important conditions. 1. Advanced coronary artery disease. 2. Valvular heart disease. 3. Hypertensive heart disease. 4. Cardiomyopathies. In general, never underestimate LBBB, even if the patient looks healthy. Disconcordant SDT wave changes, is a normal finding in LBBB. They can be present in all, or some leads, or can be absent as well. Note that, positive T wave in leads with positive QRS complexes, is so called, positive QRS D concordance. This is the normal finding in LBBB. But depressed SD segments, or inverted T waves, in leads with concomitant negative QRS complexes, is so called negative QRS D concordance. It is generally considered as an abnormal finding. Therefore, underlying ischemia must be considered. Let me show you an example. This EKG, belongs to a 67 year old male, with long standing hypertension, presented with retrosternal chest heaviness. As you see, wide QRS complexes, associated with deep S in V1, 
slurred R in V6, absent septal Q in lateral leads, and prolonged R peak time in V5, D1, and AVL, establish LBBB. Secondary STT changes are present in precordial leads. If we take a good look at the strip, we recognize that, there is negative QRST concordance in D2 and AVF. This establishes acute ischemia, as the most possible cause of chest heaviness. On the other hand, there is positive QRST concordance in AVL. As we already said, positive QRST concordance, is normal in context of LBBB, and has no clinical significance. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked this video, please subscribe me and ring the bell. Good luck.